Hi everybody. So we've been doing a fair few things recently using welding and quite a lot of people are saying I'd like to weld. How do you go about it? Now I don't pretend to be a master of welding. In fact I'm a bit of a jack of all trades but as the saying goes jack of all trades master of none more often times better than master of one. It's one of those things I actually believe. So I don't need to be a master welder. I need to be able to weld in well enough to stick two pieces of metal together without them coming apart as I use them. That is the level of my welding skill. There are plenty of people out there who do beautiful welds like you wouldn't believe. But as my ambition is not to build a scale replica of the Titanic and sail to New York in it, my ambition is to build a rocket stove. Being okay is all I need to be. Being okay means that I don't need to worry about all the ins and outs of welding because to be a master of welding takes a huge amount of effort. It's a very complicated subject and there's a lot to decide. To be able to weld something together to be a rocket stove, there's very little you actually need to do. And in fact, if you can saw a piece of wood, drill a hole, hammer in a nail, you're gonna be able to weld. In fact, if you can't do those, you're going to be able to weld because at that level, welding is really easy. It's a practical skill. It's a skill that you practice and you get better at. If you spend all of the time reading this stuff about the ins and outs to be a master of welding and you've never welded before, you pick up your gear and give it a go, you're still going to be rubbish. And then you're going to think, oh, welding is hard. You're going to be rubbish because welding is a practical skill. One way to learn to weld is to roll up your sleeves and weld, curiously enough. A little bit of reading doesn't do any harm at all because there's some things you do need to know. But the most important thing about welding is welding. So great, read a bit, but don't substitute procrastination of knowing for actually doing. Pick it up and learn to weld. Now, welding requires a little bit of equipment, but it's actually surprisingly little that you need. This is an uh, x -Court MMA Welder 300E. It's a new style welder. The welders used to come with a great big transformer in there and they weighed a ton and you needed a forklift to move them around. These things have banks of capacitors. The capacitors are charged in series and discharged in parallel and they act like a transformer. But it makes them very much lighter, very much cheaper, very much more reliable, very much more easy to use. So they're stunningly simple things to use with far less stick that you, that you used to get with the transformer ones. So they're much easier to use. They tend to be in the price range of sort of 150, 200 pounds. And they're all pretty much of a muchness at that level. This was, uh, I think, 170 pounds or something like that. Now it goes from 25 to 200 amps. We put the amps up to get more heat into the metal to melt the metal. And it applies a voltage. And it's one of those things that people worry about is the voltage. This particular one, because it says on the plate right here, is 20 volts to 25 volts. That is half the low voltage regulations in the UK. The low voltage regulations in the UK are for any supply less than 50 volts. Your telephone line, for instance, is 60 volts. Any supply less than 50 volts, the low voltage regulations are amount to, meh, who cares? And that's about what it is, because 50 volts or less has a great deal of difficulty going through you because you're one big resistor. I mean, sure, if you dress yourself up as some chainmail and a suit of armour and stand in a pool of your own mess while gripping these, it's going to give you an almighty tingle. If you're normal dress like me, 25 volts is going to have a challenge. Now, you can buy these in high voltages, but if you're a, a jobbing welder or a beginning welder, don't do that. And then you won't have the worries. The voltage is actually particularly low on these things and on, on this one. And just check that voltage so you're well below the low voltage regulations. The real issues with these are the light that it actually generates and the heat that it generates. Because, because you're welding and welding is about melting metal. So the metal flows one into the other and that's how you create your joint. And doing with that with steel needs some mighty temperatures. So the heat is an issue. And the light is an issue. So if you're going to start with some welding, the next thing you need is a set of gauntlets. These are some leather gauntlets that protect you from the heat. They're about 30 quid. 
So they're quite expensive in gauntlet terms, but because when you're handling everything, it's hot, you want a decent set of gauntlets. And a decent set of gauntlets is going to cost you about that. Another thing you need is a visor, because that UV light is so bright, if you stare at it, you're going to go blind. And so you want something to stop you doing that. Now, the old welding masks used to be a filter. You can't see jack through them, so you'd have a look at what you were doing, hold the mask, and then prod at it until you got enough UV you could see what you were doing. These things are auto-sensing. Now, this was £25. It's auto-sensing. When it gets the bright light, it'll shut down the filter, and all you can see is the weld. It is well worth its money to get one that is auto-sensing. But you don't need to be spending hundreds of pounds on an auto-sensing helmet when you're going to be making rocket stoves. 30, 40 quid, that's going to be fine, and that's what I spent on them, and I've had no issues with it at all. So a set of gauntlets and a welding helmet, along with your welder, is what you need to get going. And there is one more essential tool. This is it. <laughs> this is the key to good welding at this level. Because as I said, as long as those bits stick together and don't come apart in use, I'm happy with that weld. But of course we want something pretty. So if you lash on a load of metal and it's looking ugly, you can take that to clean it up and put some filler and paint on there and you'll have a pretty weld. And that weld will hold together as long as you've made it. So it holds together and it'll hold together and look pretty. Angle Grinder was £15 from my local big box store. So for the expense of around about £200 to £220, you're going to have everything you need to get you going on welding, apart from one thing, and that is the balls to do it. Now, I say that, but it is scary. It's scary because it crackles like crazy and produces a whole lot of heat, and it's going to make you jump. The thing about welding is to get over that flight or fight jump response that you've got, to stick your head in there and stick that rod in there and listen to it crackle. When you can do that, then you're going to begin to learn to weld, and by practicing, you're going to get better, because it is a practical skill. Now, people argue a lot. I think it's because people like to argue. And they forget what it is that you're trying to do. And you need to set your objectives of what it is that you want to do. If you want to become a master welder and work on the next space shuttle, sure, go to college, spend a five-year apprenticeship, learn how to weld with absolutely everything, MIG, TIG, MNA, whatever it is. If you're going to make projects like your own bike, your own chair, your own furniture, your own stoves, then this arc welder, which is MMA, and a gay abandon will see you right for being able to do that, and not a lot matters, which is really cool. You'll notice the thing comes with these two green cables, so maybe different colours. And on the front here, we've got a plus and a minus. Now, people will argue which way around to put those, because that one with the clamp goes on your workpiece. This bit here is where you stick your welding rod, and there are various camps that tell you in different conditions your welding rod needs to be plus or minus. Actually, at the level we're doing it, it doesn't matter a damn which way around it goes. I tend to put the workpiece in minus, I tend to put the rod in plus. If I swapped them around, I wouldn't notice a blind bit of difference. If I were a master welder, I'm sure I would. But if my level of welding, and if you're learning to weld, doesn't really matter. You can pick that bit up later when you're making nice welds, which will be sometime down the line. The only other thing this thing has is this button on here to set the amps. Now, it's a pretty random scale, so it's not going to be 95 amps. It's going to be somewhere around 95 amps. It goes up to 300 amps, which you're going to use for some pretty heavy-duty welding jobs. And you change that depending on the thickness of metal. Now, when we're welding something, what we're going to use <laughs> is welding rods. These things. Predominantly, you're going to be welding steel. You can get the different rods to do different jobs. And written on the rod, you will find a number. This one is E5013. Oh, sorry, 6013. That is the rod for steel. It's got a flux on the outside, it's got a bit of steel in the middle, and that's the one that we're going to use to weld with. All mild steel gets welded with this stuff. If you're welding different materials, well, you buy the right rod. If you want to know which rod it is, when you go on Amazon, it will say, rod for stainless steel. 
and so it's not really difficult to know which one. Now, different mechs people will argue about, of course, because they do like to argue, but actually you'll just get used to your own that you will prefer and like, and then you'll just buy it time and time again. But these rods are the other thing you need, and they're actually stunningly cheap, actually. They're not really expensive at all, and they're the consumable. And the rod goes in there. And it has various angles on it where you can hold it at different angles to get yourself into position to weld nicely. Now we are actually all set up to go. Once we're all set up to go, we come to the scary bit. It'll arc, it'll stick and it'll scare the bejesus out of you and you'll create this mess on the surface and that is fairly typical for your weld experience. Now uh, there are a couple of things to know at this stage. You'll notice that's quite a thick rod. So using thick rods for thick metal, thin rods for thin metal, high amps for thick metal with thick rods, low amps for thin metal and thin rods. That is pretty much all the guidance you need. Now people will give you settings, but again, it's gonna be one of those things where you learn by experience because welding is a practical skill to have. You just try it and see. So you don't expect to cut up your first thing, do your first perfect weld and the very first time you do it, expect to have it do this and then you're not going to be disappointed because you're going to have to practice. Now the first thing you need to learn to do, the first thing you really want to do, is get used to welding this in a nice straight line. Now the rest of it is all about setup. People use magnets, clamps, weights, all kinds of things, just to make sure that one piece that you're welding stays in line with the other piece that you're welding and doesn't move. Now there's often a technique called tack welding, where you basically tap two spots of a weld on to keep it in place and then run your weld bead after you put a couple of spots in there to keep everything in one place. So the main problems you're going to hit is it's sticking, in which case turn your amps up. Too much metal on, which is why we have grinders. And the other thing, burning holes through stuff. If you're holding the rod there too long, it will burn through the metal, remember, because it is melting the metal. So turn your amps down, use a thinner rod. Now there is a th minimum thickness of this that you're supposed to be able to weld, and that's three millimetres. I have welded down to one millimeter and I do that just by tacking along and making sure the heat doesn't build up in any area so that it melts its way through and I have read the comment I hate that if you can't do it well don't do it that is the most useless comment I've ever heard because you never do anything well the first time you practice a practical skill you're gonna do it badly if you don't do it you'll never get to the stage where you do it well so it's a useless comment the better comment is read, learn, practice, and then you're gonna get good at welding. Now, one of the things I love about the channel is how knowledgeable the people are who make comments. If you ask a question, you're gonna find some really great help, and I don't doubt for a second once this video goes up, there's gonna be a ton of hints and tips for people to take on board about welding, and that's where your journey begins. Practice, read, practice again that's how you learn and this video i hope will help in that because to my mind the biggest thing that stops people welding is just their fear of welding when you pick it up and give it a go worry about what you need to worry about that is the light the heat and the fumes don't weld zinc if you're doing galvanized steel clean the zinc off first if you're worried about the fumes wear a face mask those kind of things are the stuff you need to worry about, the stuff you need to pay attention to, and approach with due care and diligence. And remember, it is hot after you've finished welding it, 
so don't go picking it up with your bare fingers. Give it a chance to cool. Apart from that, absolute breeze to get yourself going and a whole world of opportunity once you do. I hope the video helped. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.